Hello everyone, Morris here, and today I'm bringing you another meta report for X and Infinity Origins. Now Season 7 is the early Mystic Era, and even though it's early, it's kind of already kind of set, I feel, in terms of the meta, well, for the whole rest of the season. Having said that, well, maybe it's not just about Healing Pulse, but who knows? Uh, yeah, Healing Pulse has, has been a bit too OP, I must say, at least for the first few days of the Mystic Era. Uh, having said that, though, uh, there might be a counter, you know, Brutal Claw, Brutal Claw might be a maybe an effective way of actually countering Healing Pulse. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll get into the statistics later. And I should also mention that you know, Perch with Last Stand may get a chance, but still, Healing Pulse is just too much shield for the you know, Perch to deal with. But uh, yeah, let's just get into the actual statistics. Uh, okay, actually, before I get into the statistics, uh, I just want to kind of mention a bit uh, about just the problem of Healing Pulse and really just in general. But first of all is, uh, I won't say nobody saw it coming, but most people focus actually more on like the Feather Descent, focus on more bubble was too strong, and nobody really talked about Healing Pulse. So it's definitely something that kind of slipped through in terms of, uh, I think, even the balance team, right? They, I think they admitted that you know, they you know, might not have looked into this, and you know this kind of thing happens, right? Uh, and I do want to then talk about, in a way, might, might highlight that the, one of the downsides or constraints of a Web3 game in that sense is because, well, in this particular case, right, uh, for, if it's a Web2 game, uh, there will probably just be a patch and then, of course, maybe some sort of refunds in terms of, you know, people who bought the charm or something or bought the runes or something. But in this case, it can't really do much in terms of actually making any changes. And it will just be like that the rest of the season. Uh, for most of the teams, I don't think it's going to be at anywhere close to the power level of Healing Pulse, uh, maybe with the exception of Brutal Claw. But if you're playing any other teams, yeah, that's probably too bad. If you face a Healing Pulse team that is average, you'll probably lose. Uh, so that's just the way it is. Uh, and I think, I hope that next season, when the balance team really get together and you know, discuss about it, I do want them to focus on the you know the player experience part right uh, so I'm not really just talking about the healing powers in this case but actually it's more about in general like the how do people feel when facing against a certain archetype so I feel like things like bubble also or maybe even perch might also fall into the category where there's just not a lot of counterplay uh, you know, when you face those teams, if you are not just a relatively slow team, you might just lose. Um, so it sometimes this feels bad. So I do hope that there's, you know, like hopefully the game design-wise can go into a direction where there's more counterplay in terms of, you know, just not just about equipping charm, but just during even the gameplay, there might be a certain decision that you can make to counter certain teams as opposed to uh, yeah unfortunately a lot of the times sometimes you just queue in and you see the opponent's team you're like okay all right um, probably next game you know it's just sometimes some teams just don't have a chance against other teams so uh, that's basically how it is at the moment um, well having said that I uh, sure like that uh, in the at the moment is quite imbalanced in terms of the meta at the very top having said that though if you are, you know, not a very, you know, when I say not a very serious player, I was going to say more like if you are more of a casual player who just want to get into challenger and at the lower challenger, to be honest, I don't think it affects us too much, right? Where, you know, at the lower end, of course, if you face healing pulse or something OP, it will, you know, too bad. But uh, the general meta is still relatively diverse, of course, compared to at the very top where you might just see healing pulse. Okay. Uh, so, all right, getting to the statistics. So, in terms of player base, it's very quickly, uh, yeah, see another maybe 6,000 players join the game, which is good. Uh, but then, of course, most of them, like 4,000 of them, are basically at below 200 victory star, meaning they never really progress much, which is fair. At the other statistics I do want to point out is the number of people at Tiger. I think the number of people at Tiger is kind of stabilized and actually, in a way, a bit of a decline compared to last week. Meaning there are actually more people going up, right, from Tiger than you know, people from the below going in to Tiger. That's how I assume. Uh, so that kind of means that 
uh, well, the, the player base is quite stable, stabilized already, and then people are just climbing up. And this is uh, well another thoughts that I have in terms of this XC Origins in general, because the player base, uh, the size of the player base has really been pretty stable for the past year, I must say, like 2023 has just been like, uh, flat, I would say, and similarly now. And the question I have is really, I wonder whether XC Origins will actually you know, break out similar to what like XC Classic did in 2021, right? Or even like Pixel has been doing for the past few months. I wonder whether XC will be, you know, actually, you know, break out in any way, or it will just be like this for the foreseeable future. I don't know. Uh, maybe SkyMavers is already quite satisfied with how Origins is in terms of, well, doesn't have to be like the, the player base, but more just revenue wise, right? Maybe that's just, okay, that's kind of the resource that they want to put in. And then if it keeps it that way, it's fine. I don't know. Uh, or maybe they will make some drastic changes one way or the other. I don't know. Maybe they will hopefully, well, from a player perspective, improve the game, having you know, may attract more new players to come, but maybe they feel like they've tried for the whole year and you know, they haven't really progressed too much in terms of, you know, just attracting new players and maybe they will just focus on other things, which to be honest, they've already focused a lot more on, you know, recruiting other games into, onto Ronan as opposed to, um, yeah, focusing on their own game, I feel, right? Um, and even um, Homeland, um, I also play Homeland and of course it, there was a bit of a drama when it, you know, I got revamped and then it, it wasn't, you know, what players expected. So yeah, I do wish that you know uh, there will be better gameplay in terms of you know just the Sky Mavis in-house games um, and of course the you know the XE games in general. Okay, uh, all right, enough of that. Let's just get into the archetype usage and wow, you can see here. Right, uh, but one thing I should note is that there are only you know three players at the very top bracket and then I think another yeah six players. Uh, at the second bracket, and so you can see the top is very, very wide, right? Uh, in terms of, you know, just like maybe only a few people, like a handful of people really, are in the top 200 victory star, and then everyone else is half below that. So you can see how far the elite that they have got by playing, of course, Healing Pulse, right? Uh, the light orange here. So you can see everyone pretty much is playing Healing Pulse. Uh, at least at the top 10 and also even the top, I would say, 20, 30 players, right? And even if you look at uh, above 23,000, right? If you scroll back to the graph here, above 23,000 would be the top 50, 60 players. Most of them are playing Healing Pulse. So that's the kind of meta we have at the very top. Of course, uh, this is what I mentioned. Uh, if you are just you know, a casual player, like fighting to get into uh, you know, uh, Challenger or just maybe even 20K, it's actually pretty good, right? You can see everyone's pretty healthy like in terms of the meta, very diverse, but of course it is when you get up there, this is when it starts to break down basically. So in that sense, it doesn't really affect too many players, but of course it still can in the sense that you know people will, uh, even at the lower bracket, will face uh, teams that are you know, on their way up, right? So it still feels bad in that sense. But okay. Um, the other thing I should note, of course, is the Brutal Claw, right? The dark brown here is actually also concentrated at the top. At the moment, there's not as many of those teams. Well, multiple reasons. One is, of course, people might not know about it in terms of it being a potential counter to Healing Pulse and this is the power level wise, right? People might not know about it. Of course, the other thing is, it's not easy to get the so-called six AOE beasts, right, for the Brutal Claw as well. And of course, you should have you know the support as well. That's I would say pretty specific, right? You have the Reptile, right, with the Paralyzing Glare, and then probably like a Dusk with a Gloomy Dice or something. So that you know, has to be pretty specific, of course, with Chubby and all those cards as well. It is pretty expensive, I must say, right? Uh, you also need quite a number of um, hidden razor as well so you know bleed right uh, so that's um, oh and of course um, well I will mention a bit more later the the discount queue point as well on the chubby right? uh, to make it cheaper to apply bleed you know all those are pretty expensive so that might stop players you know, like especially casual players from actually trying out the archetype 
Okay, um, anything else here? Perch is kind of still there. One thing to note is that you can see some feather, but I do feel like feather, uh, this is still relatively early on, right? Days four and six, and I feel like they are definitely on their way down. Um, and finally, something to note up on this chart is actually the multiple archetypes, right? So this this kind of uh, bluish uh, color here, right? And um, here's where I should show you that, well, when I say multiple archetypes, we have basically teams that actually combines different archetypes, and that's very interesting. Uh, for example, there's actually a Purge Tiny Fan team uh, up there, I think tw top 20 or something. A Brutal Claw Feather team is quite a common combination, right? You have the Brutal Claw, but then you also use the Feather Descent uh, because both are just so good, right? Um, Brutal Claw Healing Pulse as well, I see that combination. Uh, interesting, I also see Sustained Story Fighter, I'm not sure how good that is, and also you know, Triple R Healing Pulse. So the different combinations, uh, and Hot Butt and Confuse also, I think one of them in the top 20, uh, 200. So yeah, there are different combinations, and I think it is fun to see how you can merge different archetypes uh, you know, to perhaps make it work, or perhaps it's just so strong, like certain runes are just so strong that you can just you know put them together. Okay, then let's move on to look at the win rates. Uh, and here, let's uh, look at it. I zoom out a bit, and then you can see here, like uh, healing pulse is of course the ones that are just pretty much all green, yeah. Uh, and of course, the only ones that are on top. Brutal claw is actually not doing pretty well, I guess, except at the very, very top. Of course, if you face uh, a lot of healing pulse, is still not the best. But you know, um, and of course, you don't really just see healing pulse; you might see other things as well. Having said that, it's, it's I would say definitely a power level wise a very strong archetype. And to be honest, without healing pulse, I'm pretty sure brutal claw would be the you know might probably be the one that people will be talking about. Uh, and of course, Feather Descent, right? Feather is still very strong. So those would be the ones to look out for in terms of going up. Uh, and I guess I do want to mention like the Ram Tiny Fan, which is, of course, at this point, very low popularity. That's why it's actually at the bottom of the chart. Right? This is ranked by popularity from top to bottom. And uh, I can see some potential. I must say it's, of course, not as good as Healing Pulse and definitely, yeah, not as good as Brutal Claw, but maybe, you know, I right, can have some potential if it's further optimized. And, of course, the other things I do want to talk about is the archetypes that are on the way down, so Sustain for sure, right? Sustain just have no chance against, against Healing Pulse because Healing Pulse effectively just ignore shields and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and Jinx also not doing too well, unfortunately. Uh, the other one that's interesting to see is the Anomaly. Uh, Anemone also not doing the best and is kind of falling off compared to other more popular archetypes or you know, like traditionally popular archetype like Sandals and Sponge, they are holding up mm, okay. But yeah, Anomaly definitely falling off. Poison is another one that might not be doing too well. Uh, Fury Argo also not doing the best. Okay, so uh, yeah, so the ones that are holding up really uh, in terms of popular archetypes will be Sandals, Sponge, and probably Perch. Yeah. Okay, so then let's look, to in, look into the matchups, and this is where it gets interesting. Do note that this is for um, you know, everyone that's 1900 V-Star or above. So, of course, they will include quite a number of you know, not-so-optimized team. But let's just see, right? And, of course, uh, the one that comes up the most is Healing Pulse with pretty much all green, but... Okay, so this is not surprising, right? The all green part, but the key part is actually the 40% win rate against uh, Brutal Claw. So this is where there's a bit of hope in terms of uh, like a counter to a you know otherwise pretty much OP team, right? So Brutal Claw, I do feel like can have uh, a, a, a good matchup or at least an even matchup against Healing Pulse. Of course, there could be other factors playing into it as well because more people playing Healing Pulse, so there'll be more uh, so-called not-so-optimized team as opposed to Brutal Claw and stuff like that. But still, um, you know, if, actually, if you check out the, uh, you know, the blog post, at the bottom of the blog post, there's, uh, there's bracket-specific, uh, V-star bracket-specific um, charts as well. And it's actually the win rate for Brutal Claw is pretty good against Healing Pulse, except for the very top. So yeah, so there's definitely hope. Um, but for Brutal Claw, it's of course not 
as you know, OP as healing pulse, and it has its own weaknesses as well. So poison would be one. Right? So poison with a lot of cleanse and a lot of heal in general, and uh, so might be could be faster than brutal claw. So that's one thing. Uh, and perch as well. So perch could also be you know pretty fast. Um, and sponge, right? Sponge with the again pretty fast like OTK kind of team, but also you know with the shield. Uh, interestingly, you know the, the spikes and you know tiny fan also might be good against brutal claw, but those are not too popular, so it's not you know um, too exciting at this point. And maybe tiny fan can get up there. Who knows? Uh, and finally, I do want to mention um, the perch. Yeah, actually, perch is something I do want to talk about. Is because it's kind of still there, uh, but now of course you probably need to have last stand in order to basically buy your next return and do another perch uh, so it's definitely still doing well right perch is actually actually still doing well of course except against healing pulse healing pulse is too fast um, uh, and sustain can also be a problem or well, actually healing pulse is not just about too fast but healing pulse is also a lot of shield right the amount of shield that it can generate is just crazy right shield while doing all this crazy damage so that's why it's going to be tough for perch just to go through that shield uh, and similarly right going against this thing can also be tough just because of the shield basically right um yeah but otherwise you know, the matchup is is pretty good uh of course feather can be tough for perch just because the rage stack actually you know hurts quite a bit because the of you know, the it actually the rage some people forget right that it actually takes extra damage as well and of course with feather it's not the best combination or it's you no know, it doesn't it's not the best but still it's, it's still not bad right? perch can still be very fast um, okay so that's pretty much all i want to talk about in terms of uh matchup so i do want to highlight uh, at least go through you know the what is a healing pulse team right and a healing pulse team basically of course consists of a plant with healing pulse with effectively all healing um or healing cards right so the must have for sure should be cucumber slice right? is the aoe heal is just too strong um, of course with an innocent lamb right, um, that can turn into another cucumber slice but also it can turn into a strawberry shortcake as well so strawberry shortcake has another use which is of course it's reverse heal right, and it can target any enemy so it basically can make a certain enemy has the lowest HP and then um, yeah, then healing pulse damage would deal with it so um, for those who might not know what healing pulse actually does is that it's this, this axis heals also heal or reverse heal the target allies for 30 percent of the value so effectively it's kind of like a uh, i guess what's that called uh, um the aqua effect right where it's splash or something right but in this case it's effectively splashing the heal um or, or reverse heal um but the key is actually that overheal from this axis is granted as shield to the target right so overheal basically give you shield so you can you know get a lot of shield but that's not the crazy part the crazy part is dealt as you know the the overheal also dealt as damage right to the lowest hp enemy so it basically just do massive amount of damage to the lowest hp enemy so you can basically just ko uh yeah one enemy with just a cucumber slice right with uh, together with getting a lot of shield uh, so the other things that i should mention is um summons so the aoe heal uh and the, with the healing pulse actually works with summon as well meaning the overheal of this on the summon also works as overheal meaning uh yeah you can just deal a lot more overheal because you can just put some summons so that's why healing pulse team usually run a shiitake or hollow right just summons um yeah for the overheal but of course also for the effect as well uh yeah so that's uh, and then of course some card draw for consistency is a uh, pretty good as well and yeah sound whisper is always good just to sleep or even just to counter uh, poison or other things um yeah and in terms of charm not much to say uh just buff all your healing <laughs> cards on your healing pulse backsy that's pretty much it uh, and in terms of rune, I should mention, right, the, of course, healing powers, but the two support rune, the best ones are definitely uh, the Holy Prayer, which, which can give you up to 15% uh, you know, for allies Axie, and also, of course, the 
Uh, I forgot what this is called already. It's the um, yeah, pure instinct. Yes, pure instinct, which also give you 15% as well because you yeah, have three different uh, axes of different classes. So yeah, this basically makes this healing pulse actually crazily strong, and that's basically how it works. Okay, uh, then let's just get into brutal claw. Brutal claw is uh, I, I feel like it's going to be an upcoming archetype that's at the top just to counter, well, actually not just to counter healing pulses because it is at its own a very strong archetype. So of course, you have Brutal Claw, uh, the beast with, well, ideally six AOE cards. Um, and I feel like in this season, what definitely helps is the discount coupon on Chubbies, which just makes it a lot easier to get bleeds on right before you might have to put two energy spend two energy now you can just put one energy and then of course razor blade on all the other aoe cards and stuff uh yeah so that's why i just put a lot of uh, bleeds on and yeah and then of course uh, for those who don't know brutal claw what it does is on targets with bleeds and single and AOE attacks create Bloodstorm. And the Bloodstorm, what it does is that it minus one bleed on the target, but usually you already have like, you know, uh, more than 10 bleeds. So uh, it doesn't really matter to minus 10 bleed, that's uh, why minus one bleed. And what it does is that it does AOE damage uh, of 12 HP. So uh, yeah, it's just a lot of AOE damage basically and of course bleed can also be annoying for certain opponents as it just needs to play card um, yeah so that's effectively how it is uh, of course yes the blood storm will only work on target with at least 10 bleed but you'll get to it pretty easily especially if uh, yeah like if you don't get 10 bleed yet you know the brutal claw also doubles the bleed stack on them uh, on the targets so during early game so you get to 10 bleeds pretty easily and uh, I guess the other things I should mention is the runes. Right? Um, the Prioritizing Glare, of course, is actually a very important one as well because it also increases or it put doubt on the opponent. So that's the one of the key effects, of course. Um, and of course, it also does the pure damage when it you know does debuff. So meaning, of course, Chubby, but also Razor Blade, and also you know just the weak here as well. Like all these debuff cards will also do damage. Oh. In this case, it's all AOE, so it's basically an AOE team. Uh, and Groomy Dice is actually an interesting pick in the sense that it um, is now buffed as well. It's pretty annoying, I must say, because now Fear uh, is turns into whenever you play a card, then you get uh, confused. So it definitely is going to be very annoying for certain type of teams like Feather. Right? Every Feather dagger, imagine that you that they play, then you they'll get a confused into their hand or uh, not hand but into their draw power can be pretty annoying even for Nemo tails and stuff like that so uh, one thing to note is yeah this this team also take a Mentis dagger <laughs> which we don't see that much anymore but it is very important you know, so, you know even to give this a chance to basically uh, maybe discard the opponent's cucumber slice I think that's the key one against Healing Pulse, but yeah, just in general, or maybe even Wing Horn, right? Getting rid of Wing Horn is also very good. So this is, I think, actually one of the key charms on the Garish Worm. So it effectively just got two cards. Okay, uh, so yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, in terms of this meta report, it's been pretty long, I think. Uh, uh, but I don't think there'll be much to say for the next two weeks, I feel he'll probably be the same. And I don't know how many weeks of off season there will be. So yeah, let's just see if they, we see Brutal Claw climbing up to actually fight against Healing Pulse. But otherwise, I don't see anything else that could happen. Uh, yeah, so okay, so let's just enjoy. Uh, well, if you are on the lower ladder in terms of, you know, uh, you know leaderboard, then maybe you will still face different type of team. But if you're at the top, then yeah, good luck and have fun and yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's it and I'll see you in the next video.